Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us here tonight as we celebrate the accomplishments of the late Mayor Edwin M. Lee, which will be forever documented in the city archives. I was honored to be in Chinatown earlier today to present Mayor Lee and the city he loves, a summary of accomplishments 2011 through 2017 to our city librarian, Michael Lambert. And even though one book cannot fully convey what Ed Lee did for our city and what he gave to our city, it is of critical importance to record his accomplishments and document his legacy and his place in San Francisco's history. And as you know, previous mayoral administrations compiled and published accomplishments at the end of their tenures. But because Mayor Lee tragically and unexpectedly passed away almost two years before the end of his second term, the record of his administrative accomplishments and highlights had to wait. And that's because when faced with this unspeakable tragedy, Mayor Lee's department heads, the mayor's staff, and his friends knew what we had to do and what he would want us to do. And he would want us to take care of the city, which we did, to provide a smooth transition to Mayor Breed, then Mayor Farrell, and now back to Mayor Breed. <laughs> and to keep the people of San Francisco as our highest priority, even while we grieved. We now have had time to reflect on nearly seven years of Mayor Lee's administration and today we are gathered here to memorialize his leadership and contributions, affirm his legacy, and celebrate the man and the mayor, Ed Lee, and who he was. Please take time to read through the book. It details Mayor Lee's work on critical issues that he faced as the, in the city. All sounds very familiar because we're dealing with these issues today. The need for more housing at all income levels, housing for homeless, providing clean and safe neighborhoods, building a resilient city, improving local and regional transportation, fighting climate change, introducing innovation and new technology into city government, strengthening the city's social safety net, and fighting for civil rights, equity, inclusion amidst the backdrop of national attacks on our civic values, all while celebrating San Francisco. None of this happened in a vacuum, we have to remember that Mayor Lee's administration began amidst of a backdrop of national economic uncertainty, record unemployment, and overwhelming city budget deficits. This book puts his accomplishments and administration in historical context and details his work to stabilize a city struggling through the Great Recession, putting people back to work, and protecting city services. I would like to give a special thank you to our hardworking committee, former mayoral staff, department heads, and colleagues who helped get this over the finish line. First, I'd like to really thank Selena Sun, our project manager extraordinaire. <laughs> a special thank you to Mayor Lee's chief of staff, Steve Kava and Jason Elliott. As we were great grieving, Jason had the presence of mind in the weeks and day, the days and weeks after Mayor Lee passed away to start collecting all of this information that went in the book today. And he had appointed Kate Howard to collect it. And as a result, I want to thank Kate Howard, Deputy Chief of Staff to Mayor Lee. His great strategic advisors and communications team, Christine Falvey, Tony Winokur, and Deirdre Hussey. Mary Jung, who helped put this event, this host, this event tonight, and many more. Yes. Thomas Lee, who did the great graphics artists, Bill Barnes, Jay Chen, Caitlin Jacobson, Tyrone Ju, Lee Mei Lu, Susanna Leong, Tao Ketone, Olga Ryerson, Francis Tang, and Martha Cohen, who put the tablecloths out in the colors of all the great sports teams that Mary Lee loved, the Giants, the Warriors, and the 49ers. Mary Lee was a champion and leader for all. 
who had a track rec he had a track record for bringing people together as evidenced by the array of people you see here tonight. I wanna to thank you all again for joining us. And up next, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Mayor London M. Breed. Hello, everyone. Good evening. So I had a prepared speech, but I decided to deviate from it because I was looking through this book and I saw this picture with Mayor Lee and Michelle Obama. Now let me tell you the story behind the picture. We were at the Salesforce conference and we were listening to the fireside chat of Mark Benioff and Michelle Obama. And of course it was Michelle Obama, so we were all like excited and giddy. And afterwards, you know, they usually have the photo line. And so the mayor and I, I jumped on the mayor's bandwagon, of course. Deidre, I think you were there. And I was like, okay, Mayor Lee, we need to get you a picture with Michelle Obama. Let's go, let's go. So even though I was the president of the board, I was like his staffer because, you know, I know how to do that too. And so I'm bringing the mayor up and we're standing in line. It's like, okay, stand here. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is the mayor of San Francisco. And all these people are, 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 this is the mayor of San Francisco, and we, we're way back here. And then I start seeing people, and I start making those folks come over to help us. And so basically, I'm like, come on, mayor, we're going to the front of the line because, you know, he has to get back to work. This is the mayor of San Francisco, everybody. So we cut in line, and then someone saw us and then moved us up to the very front. And guess who was the first person to take a picture with Michelle Obama? It was actually me, but, <laughs> but the point is, the point is, the mayor was so gracious. <laughs> and that was the kind of person that he was. He would have stood in that line. He would have stood in that line and he would have waited. He would have taken a picture with everyone who would have asked him. He would have had conversations with anyone because that was the kind of person he was. He was very gracious and over the course of the time that I worked with him as a member of the Board of Supervisors, again, it was, okay, Mayor, this is what I want. And then it was like, okay, Mayor, I'm gonna do the press conference on my own. I'm gonna take all the credit for it. You don't mind, do you? Um, and he would always say, go ahead because the work was more important to him. The results of the work that we were doing to serve the citizens of this city, it was more important than who got the credit. And that was so, what was so amazing about him as someone who wasn't necessarily a politician. He was just a person who cared about doing good things for people. He cared about doing good things for San Francisco. He cared about making great things happen for the people of San Francisco. So many of you who either work for him or work with him, you cared about him because he genuinely not only cared about the work you were doing, he cared about your lives and what was going on in your lives and how your lives were impacted by the decisions that we were making in City Hall every single day. So it is really a fitting tribute to have this documentation to just really recognize and put into perspective, you know, all of the work that he's done. And as someone who is now in, in the position as mayor, I got to tell you, it's a newfound appreciation for Mayor Lee and what he did and how he worked with people and how he basically, I don't know how he tolerated all the stuff, did he? <laughs> But it's a newfound appreciation um, for what he, he did to keep the city going. And to take this and look at the number of jobs and to look at the climate change and all the different initiatives and all the work and how much of an impact that it's not only had on the citizens of San Francisco, but people followed San Francisco's example in other cities throughout the country. The things that we do, did here are many of the things that other communities are, are, are now trying to duplicate. And his leadership, his forethought, his inspiration, and what he did to get the city to this point has been absolutely amazing. We were so lucky to have his leadership, to have his support, to have his guidance, and yes, on occasion, to have his not so funny jokes. <laughs> Which, you know, Anita would just laugh and roll her eyes a little bit, but that was her boo, so she had his back and 
And, and to all the folks um, here that work for Mayor Lee over the years, thank you for your service. Thank you for just really the work that you did when we lost him and you all just rose to the occasion. It wasn't about personalities, it wasn't about politics, it was about the work and moving the city forward and taking care of San Francisco. And thank you to Anita and, and your family for um, just, you know, allowing us the opportunity to work with Mayor Lee. I, I remember times when I would come to his office to meet with him and you'd be right there and I'm like, Anita, I'm just going to be five minutes. And you're like, okay. You always said yes. You were always very supportive. And I'm so excited that Naomi and her team had the foresight to just come together to create what I think is a great documentation of his work. And we also know that even now, and most mayors probably wouldn't say this, but even now when I'm cutting those ribbons, I know that was because of the hard work of Mayor Lee. A lot of the fruits of his labor we're now starting to see come to life because of the new housing, because of you know the Chase Center that's gonna be opening this year. All these incredible things that he made happen in San Francisco, and this is the only time I'm gonna let, I'm gonna not take credit for those accomplishments. <laughs> So thank you to everyone who is here tonight to celebrate, you know, our mayor, Mayor Ed Lee, and his amazing legacy for our city. Um, and, you know, it's just, I know his birthday was just May 5th, and I see uh, Chief Joanne Hayes-White here, our former fire chief who <laughs> retired on his birthday as a tribute to, to Mayor Lee. And I, I, again, I saw you write best boss ever on his, his card. It's okay. I get it, you know. Um, you know, and it, it, it's, it's because he was, he was a great boss and he was a great fit friend and he was a great human being. And we all, I know, miss him every single day. And so I wanna thank all of you for being here. Um, for this special tribute to Mayor Lee and the work that he's done to make San Francisco a better place for us now and for generations to come. And with that, I'd like to introduce um, the person who basically, I mean, Steve, you've been in city government forever. I can't even believe you're retired now. But he's come out of retirement to occasionally assist me every now and then. And he said I wasn't as nice as Ed Lee in terms of being a boss, but you know, I'm working on it. Well, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> um, but Steve uh, was Mayor Lee's chief of staff, as you all know, for so many years. And he was like any typical chief of staff. He was always telling us no and what we couldn't do and yelling at us about money and, and how irresponsible we are and we have to take care of the citizens of the city. And then we go ask Mayor Lee for something and he says, sure, you can have that. You can do whatever you want. You know, Mayor Lee was the good cop and Steve Cobble was the bad cop, but for the purposes of protecting the city, he was definitely a dear friend to Mayor Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Cava. Thank you, Maya Breed, and she's absolutely correct. Uh, Maya Lee was a lot nicer. <laughs> he actually paid me when he, I worked for him. When I work for her, she doesn't pay. Uh, it's so great to, to be here tonight, uh, Anita, to see you um, and to see a lot of familiar faces and friendly faces. Um, you know, it's pretty much every day I think about Maya Lee. As something comes up, I drive by something, and today was no different. Uh, I got a text this morning from Tony Winnicka, and Tony said, ooh, I forgot, um, can you speak tonight at the Ed Lee event? And then he followed it with, and it will be short. And I said, it will be short? Now, if Maya Lee was here, That'd be like taking a slow ball over home plate with him the bat, and he would hit that comment out of the park with another short joke. And for the years I worked with him, I heard a lot of short jokes. I heard a lot of jokes. And the person who enjoyed those jokes the most was the mayor. 
he would laugh and laugh. Jason and all the rest of us would be trying to get back to work, and he would be still laughing about those jokes. Uh, but I miss his laugh. I miss it every day. But today we're here to talk about his legacy, his amazing legacy. And one of the things people don't realize is if you look back at his history as mayor, Mayor Lee was ahead of the time. Uh, yes, he was, uh, became mayor in the midst of the Great Recession. 40,000 San Franciscans were without a job when he became mayor. That was the issue of the day. Not for him, he had a big job, but he thought about them and their jobs and the fact they didn't have one. And how does one raise a family? How do one take care of themselves? You talk about income inequality, if you don't have a job, if you don't have a job, what does that mean? And he went right to work. He went to right to work here on Mid Market, an area of town that nobody paid attention to or tried to pay attention to, and he put something in place that allowed this economic prosperity that to this day, longest economic prosperity in San Francisco history is still going on. But guess what? Uh, I think Mayor Breed has a huge task at hand, and she's been doing a tremendous job on an issue of housing. But who started that housing initiative when nobody else was talking about it? Mayor Ed Lee, Housing Trust Fund, in 2011, when he was interim mayor. He did the most difficult thing when it comes to governing. He just decided to do it by consensus. It's not easy bringing the people of the city into one space, into one room with all different voices and try to get them to agree. We all know that. You all know that. You guys try every day to do it. He was a master at doing it. He was a master because of who he was, his personality, the fact that nobody was offended by him. Nobody was offended by him. He didn't offend anybody. It allowed you to open your mind to come in and know that something good could happen from this. He did the Housing Trust Fund. Then he did something else, and Mayor Breed was his champion with this. He decided to make sure that all those folks living in public housing weren't separate from San Francisco. They would be part of San Francisco under his administration and forever. And Mayor Breed is keeping up the good work. He also, by the way, was the first person in San Francisco that said we should raise the minimum wage in December of 2014. A lot of people take credit for that now, but he's the one who announced it. Remember that, Jason? In 2014, the first one out of the box to say we need to now start addressing this issue of income inequality, and he did that. And he did so much more. You know, the fact that this city has never had a world-class entertainment center like the Chase Center that's about to happen, I mean, it never, this city, San Francisco, didn't have one. It's going to have one because of one person, Ed Lee. We should all thank him for that. And so I could go on and on, and that book goes on and on about the great things that Mayor Lee did, but he would be really mad at me right now. He'd be saying, I didn't do it, Steve. They did it. He wouldn't want the credit, as Mayor Breed said. He wanted you all to have the credit. Because guess what? He valued public service, and he valued public servants. He didn't disgrace you or disparage you. He knew from his own history what you do every single day to make this city and make this uh, society a better place. He honored you every day by the way he carried himself, his steadiness, his lack of selfishness that he had, his selflessness that he had. It was truly amazing. He was a mayor, but the man is also somebody that we all should look up to. How he conducted himself in a very stressful environment here in City Hall and other places with the issues that he had. He never, never reacted negatively to the staff, 
when the stress was on him. He took it all in himself. He bore that burden himself. He was quite the man. I will never forget him. I don't think any of us will ever forget him. His legacy, which is in that book, is also in our heart. You know, uh, I was trying to think what really, what words can really say about uh, Mayor Lee, Ed Lee, the public servant. Um, so there's a uh, famous speech that uh, a senator from Massachusetts, um, I speak a little bit like him, but a senator from Massachusetts um, gave at a convention speech in New York. And he said, for those who cares are our concern, the cause endures, the work goes on, the hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. Thank you, Mayor Lee, for making so many dreams come true. That was beautiful, Steve. Um, next up, I'm gonna call Annie Chung from Self-Help of an Elderly. Thanks, Naomi. When Mayor made that statement about Ed never takes credit for anything, and he's so, just so humble and modest, remind me of a similar story that Mayor always comes to our Thanksgiving lunch that we give to about 3,000 seniors every year as self-help. And so that, that year, we were waiting for him, you know, for the car to drive in, sometimes with an eater, and sometimes uh, just the mayor coming from Glide or another Salvation Army or whatever. And then that day, I didn't see any police car, no escort, you know, no staff. And then Ed was just walking across the street from um, Mason Street. So we all said, Mayor, Mayor, you know, where's your car? Where's your driver? He said, oh, I gave them the day off and I just drove myself. <laughs> so after the event and Mayor went back, you know, so he said, should we uh, escort you to the car? And he said, come on, Andy, if I couldn't walk to my, you know, to my car in Chinatown, I couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> so I said, that's right. So. Naomi, you asked me to say something about Ed today, and I've been to a lot of events, been to a lot of memorials for Ed, been to a lot of celebration, and I think, Steve, you're right. Every day we walk by his tree near the Asian Art Museum that Mo planted, a lot of us were there that day, and we walk by the Chinese Newcomer School in Chinatown, and we walk by places, you know, that we remember him playing ping pong with Walter right there. And so every day there's something in our city and in our community and in our life that we think about Mayor Ed Lee. He, is, um, he was an extra, extra special person. I knew him from the late 70s when I started to work at Self-Help, and he was an attorney at the Asian Law Caucus. We were both assigned to make sure that the Ping Yun public housing tenants uh, are living in decent and safe housing. So he plays the lawyer's part to uh, sue the housing authority, and then I play the social worker part, which is to support the tenants with whatever they want. It was, I think that, that that dedication and commitment to the people who are not as fortunate as we are in this room has always been part of Ed's DNA. He always fights and advocates and protects the underserved, the minority, our seniors, our families, and our youth in the community that needed his help. I remember when he became mayor in 2011 as interim and then 2012, the first thing he did was to ask me to make sure that I bring to him whatever the seniors are lacking. He said that make sure you call me or let me know what the seniors need. And almost immediately, the state started to cut a number of very essential senior programs, like Steve, you remember the Adult Day Health Centers, 
uh, were threatened to close down. And Ed did what he promised when we brought the problem to him. He uh, asked Kate at that time and Steve to backfill the state money that we were going to lose to make sure that the seven centers remain in San Francisco to serve the very needy and handicapped seniors. So I worked with uh, merely on the immigration issues that Steve mentioned on the minimum wage with uh, Jason and with a number of issues that you just, many of us in this room are friends and colleagues, but more friends to add. And we would do anything that the mayor asked us to do. That's how much we trust him. That's how much we loved him. And that's also how much he, in return, loved and supported all of us in the community. So, Naomi, I don't know if I'm supposed to share this, but I thought that as a tribute to Mayor Lee, for the last 13 months, our community has been working quietly with Naomi, Karen, and then Steve on renaming the International Terminal as SFO after Mayor Lee. We, uh, we, uh, thought, we thought that mayor being the mayor of San Francisco and having done so much for the airport and making San Francisco an international, well-known, famous city, this would be an easy task, right, Steve? We had a lunch with you and Naomi, and we said, let's collect the signatures, submitted it to the airport commission, and we should be able to get the international terminal renamed. So many of our co-chairs are here tonight, Walter, Hagen, Norman, I think if Goretti's here, Goretti, and Henry and Malcolm. So we collected 22,000 signatures within two weeks. It, it's, a, it's an easy ask. Nobody actually said no. So along with the letters of support and then a short strategy that Steve and Naomi and the community had devised, we submitted these at the airport commission, and then we were told that there's a process in renaming and dedicating anything at the SFO, even for Mayor Adley. So 13 months went by with many, many scenarios and schemes, and the airport staff worked very hard. I was uh, appointed on the special advisory committee. There were nine of us many other commissioners, and we, um, we were at a standstill. We were at a kind of, we, we couldn't accept any of the, of, the, of the schemes that the airport staff at that point had, uh, had recommended. And then we were looking to Anita and, and the girls to give us kind of some, some green light as to how much, how much compromise that we should, um, we should take. But in, in all of that, Steve, Naomi, and Karen, I remember what you said constantly, that if the mayor was here, he would not like to see us fight over this. He would be the first one to say, no, I don't need it. Don't, don't go through all this to rename the terminal after me. And that's just the way Ed was. But the good news that in the May meeting, we got nine votes from the special committee. So unanimous and on June 4th, we are taking that resolution that the committee approved to the airport commission. And I'm hoping that it will be an unanimous vote on June 4th. And, and either that would be our birthday gift to our mayor and to the family. When we walked in, in the future, in the near future, in the departures hall, in the international terminal, right in the center, you will see Mayor Edwin M. Lee International Terminal Departures Hall. So thank you very, very much. I've gone to a lot of you for support, and we love Ed, and thank you. And Naomi, I have to say, reading through all of Ed's accomplishments, I have to thank all of you that work with Ed and for Ed. We're from the outside, don't know how much work it is, but seeing all that that was done, and so many of us are involved with so many pieces of it, and that's why Ed was as good a mayor he was because of all of you, so thank you.
Thank you, Annie. And so, um, I don't think Mayor Brown made it here this evening, or don't see him, but you know he did love Mayor Lee. He was very instrumental working with Steve Kava and our former governor, our, our governor and former mayor, Gavin Newsom. <laughs> Jason Elliott just had a heart attack right there. <laughs> But in, in having Ed become the interim mayor when then Mayor Newsom went on to run for lieutenant governor. And so um, he has had wonderful things and was a wonderful advisor and, and, and good friend to all of us, Mayor Brown, and to Mayor Lee. Um, I just want to, before I conclude, just want to give you a few more next steps on what the hardworking uh, committee is working on. Uh, we plan to make the book digital so that we can post it to the San Francisco Public Library's webpage and also to the Edwin M. Lee Foundation website. Uh, we are right now working on translating the book into uh, Chinese, Spanish, and Tagala. Uh, we, uh, we, we, were, we thought this is, uh, what, almost 18 months since he passed away, and this would be the natural time that if Mayor Lee had survived, he would have been thinking about his accomplishments in creating the book. And so this month is, his, is Asian Pacific Heritage Month. It is also the month of his birthday. So we worked in a, in a very short time frame to turn the book around. We only have a few copies here tonight, but there's a list on the table back there for everyone to order one. Uh, if you're interested in having it, but it also will be digital. And so with that, this concludes our program. Thank you all for attending. It was really nice to just be around everyone in this room tonight. And stay, we have uh, food and beverage, and let's just all kind of uh, have a toast to Mayor Edley. Thank you. Thank you.